What's going on, guys? Welcome to the very first episode of the Hot Pot Boys podcast, where we are going to be discussing serious things, not serious things, but today it's more serious. So today we're going to be covering and talking about and introducing the most important issues that are bothering Asian America to this day. To whole, this day. We got a whole list for, yes. for y'all, man. Yes. The reason that we're doing this is because, you know, we do keep up, obviously, a lot with the community. What we are doing today is not necessarily coming up with solutions, but what we want to do is just introduce them to people. So, guys, we have a, a list of 10 of the biggest issues in Asian America right now. Number one. The disparity between how Asian men are perceived and Asian women are perceived, especially in mainstream media, socioeconomic success doesn't yet mean social or sexual acceptance for Asian American men. The way Asian men are perceived versus Asian women, obviously Asian women totally bear the brunt of, of a lot of negative stereotypes themselves. Um, but basically how I would sum it up is that Asian women get a lot of attention, some good and some bad attention, and Asian men get like, almost oh, no bad. attention no attention or like kind of bad attention yeah, right Can social a metric not yes. the professional metric because yes. those are kind of separate i mean asian male have this like you know stereotype where you know they're not cool in a sense or not i wouldn't say not masculine or whatnot no compared so, to, to girls you're born in macau okay you're born in asia you grew up around the 626 area but you know this to be true because usually people move to the asian area so that they can feel so they don't have to feel this. Before I moved to the six, uh, my early years, uh, I lived in, uh, you know, Lincoln Heights. You know, I got picked on as a kid because I was maybe like one or if not two only Asians in the whole class. After that, it just like made me realize that you got to be strong minded and not care about that. And just got to worry about yourself and strive to be the best you can be with, you know, without people looking down on you. I always compare it to being like a, a currency exchange machine. So you know how you go to some countries and, you know, it depends on whether the dollar's strong versus, you know, the local currency right, there. Right. If you feel like you're not getting a good exchange rate or a fair one, it's still not an excuse to stop pumping dollars into the machine. Just because you feel like you're putting in a dollar, getting 0.85, another person puts in a dollar, gets 1.6 back. That is discouraging, <laughs> but you cannot let it stop you from pumping dollars in and accumulating more dollars. Okay, Next point, the corporate bamboo ceiling. Asians are 12% of the professional workforce while making up only 5.6% of the U.S. population. That means, you know, a lot of us have joined the professional workforce. We're well represented in that. However, for example, at Goldman Sachs, they reported that 27% of its U.S. professional workforce is Asian American, but only 11% of its U.S. executives and senior managers were Asian American. We're basically well represented in the professional workforce as yappies, but we are not upper management or executives. We don't get promoted. Asians work really, really hard. A majority of them lack leadership. You know, based off my history, man, my company, I'm not gonna say, but you know, there's not many Asians on the upper level tier. So basically what you're saying is that you understand that there might be a gap, that Asians might lack some conventional American leadership skills. Yeah. Okay. Anytime you see 27% shrink to 11%, it's probably multiple factors, right? One is the internal factor. We need more leadership coaching internally within our community and the way we're raised, obviously, in immigrant communities, they don't speak English. You know, typically just tell you to put your head down, do the work like a scientist. On the other hand, then there's the perception that nobody wants to be led by an Asian. Basically, that could be some sort of prejudice or stereotype that's placed that basically is self-fulfilling at that point. That's like being a short player in the NBA and then the coaches already don't like short players. I mean, you're already not gonna get looks. And then on top of that, being short is a legit disadvantage for, you know, attack radius in the league. Okay, so let me just say that there are different perspectives on this. I don't think everybody, I think kind of what we're saying is that there is some basis to not move Asians up because we come from an immigrant mindset or like, you know, maybe English isn't our first We're language. We're stuck in the research. When mindset. they say Asian American, they are also including just Asians in America that are not necessarily American born yeah. in race. Now, a lot of people are gonna be like, okay, that's not fair. We're just as good of a leaders as anybody else. What do you guys think about that? Like we're kind of accepting some responsibility. It's first of all, not all of our fault, but should we accept some responsibility for this? 
I mean, what can you do? I mean, you could complain about the system and we should. How else is the Matrix going to be aware that we're unhappy? But at the end of the day, you think the Matrix really cares? All you can almost do is control what you can while being aware uh, uh, of the Matrix around you. Yeah. You do not do the world a service by playing your, letting your light be dull, shine bright. Does promoting tall and buff and chiseled Asian guys, you know, with exceptional looks, only in media, only building up these guys. Does it help regular Asian guys? Not all Asians can grow to be above six foot. Well, most Asian guys right, don't look right. like that. I mean, but if we're just talking about like getting buff or like just looking like physically attractive, yes, you can do that as a, you know, regular okay. Asian guy. So you're all for working out. Yeah. Cause that's, that's the number one thing everybody can do. Yeah, of course. The issue here is like, I feel like being Asian, you're always viewed as a little bit shorter than you are. So you're always viewed as a little bit of a disadvantage. That doesn't mean 100% you can't make up for it somehow, but it's just harder. And I think that's what sucks is that we have to make up for something for no reason. You know, I could speak for, I guess, maybe the more baby face, round face guys go to Asia. I think if you are in America, honestly, I don't even know how to say this. You just gotta be a thug. Be a bodybuilder, be a protector. You guys really see real firemen that are, like put the, they don't, you know, cops and stuff, they don't look conventionally like buff fitness models with the 10 Well, packs. they're like thick. A lot yeah. of them, they're just they're massive. solid. No, we're yeah. talking about real they're society massive. protectors, yeah, yeah, not yeah. the the ones in the movies. We're talking about the real functional strength guys. That's what you got to be. Okay. Now, another issue is obviously representation of Asian women. Let's just talk about that real quick where it's like, obviously, I think that generally there's kind of this belief amongst, you know, a lot of Asian guys, especially on the internet, um, all Asian women have so much better, blah, blah, blah. They get more attention. They're getting on movies more. They're getting swiped on at a higher rate on online dating. They're the most desired. The easiest way to put it is it's like living in the big city versus the countryside. A lot of people, they look at the big city as categorically better because you get more reps and pings in. More opportunities. More opportunities. But that's not true for everybody. There are a lot of successful people in America or globally who enjoy living rural lifestyles kind of devoid of contact, devoid of, devoid of attention, devoid of pings. If you look at big cities, it comes with good and bad. You got the big city glitz, but you got the big city problems. Living in the countryside, it's almost just devoid of everything period like you know it's crickets and you know grass and things Nature like that and stuff. you know what i'm saying so uh being invisible does allow you to be unseen and not experience certain problems as much as you know someone who's getting a lot of attention so i want to say man to all those uh really tall buff good looking asian dudes out there that can become a bridge to the asian community and the non-asian community and they get, they get accepted outside of it you guys need to be the bridge and don't just stay back here with us. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. out there, explore. You the, we need you to be the pioneers. So there. Go represent for us. Basically. Yeah, not, go represent yeah. for us, man. Don't just tear it up in the Asian League. <laughs> Point number three. Guys, this is a big one. Hot one. Especially hot ones. Is, hot ones. Now, recently, let me just go over it. There's been this story. A lot of celebrity, uh, non-Asian celebrity people have been caught by the FBI in uh, a bribery scheme of paying their kids way into elite colleges um and a lot of people are be like hey guys see you all thought it was the hardworking asians that were messing up the college admissions um it's actually these privileged kids so i saw this funny tweets I mean, someone was like oh and asian parents are sitting there like wait what we could have just bribed our way in this whole time we just have to decide whether or not academics is just like the nba if you look at the nba there's some extremely marketable players like jimmer but he can't help a team they cut him. But for the most part, we have to decide whether or not academics is a meritocracy. Because if it's a meritocracy, we already know who doing dunks in the layup line. It's if the it's, Asian nerds. If it's purely uh, that's a meritocracy. Who doing 360 reverse between the legs in the layup line. I think it's safe to say that in general, Asians try the hardest to get into good colleges. All day, oh, man. They don't even sure. have a they don't have it. That's like their priority, man. Yeah, they don't have yeah. any conventional it's social lives, life. You know? Even schools like USC, not necessarily known to be like an elite. Well, like USC is always known college. for the money school, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Grades matter the least in America. Bro, this is a yeah. capitalist society. Sure. The whole thing about capitalism is that you can work the system. Everybody has their incentives. Guys, we are not saying that these are solutions. We are just saying these are the issues. All right, moving on. Asian American disaggregation statistics. Big word meaning that now when it comes to statistics, Statistics about Asian Americans were generally clumped together in one big group. They have to start.
being more specific with which Asian is which Asian. It's not all one thing. You people. got a whole mix. Man, we are not just all Chinese. I just think, you know, with each ethnicity or nationality, you got to speak as a whole. You want to be respected where, you know, we're just not all Chinese people. How specific should they get? We can't even clump all Chinese together in a way. This is my general philosophy. And I think that people should petition the machine, the matrix, Agent Smith. Marvel that it's beauty. You know, you can file a complaint with Star Command. Hello, Neo. Hello, Neo. But everybody got to be more wily and unified in pushing their own agendas outside of the traditional avenues. Now, point number five is Asians are not political enough and are not involved in government. Now, this is an issue too. There are more Asian Americans going into politics now. Of course, it makes sense. Um, so it is getting better. But right now, generally, I mean, you know, Asians don't vote a lot. You know, you know what's so funny is when people were like, you know, anytime someone pushes for something like, hey, call your local congressman, <laughs> call your local House of Representative, give them a call and tell them that you need initiative 1704. I'm like, yeah, but what if you come from a group that like, doesn't even speak English? Like, yeah. that's not <laughs> happening. Like, I think I've called a congressman once and you just get a hot Yeah, line. and, and, and considering how political people might think we are, that's not that much to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a little ashamed, but I got to admit that's true. So I just think, man, they... Asians, they like to complain a lot, but they don't like to, you know, go out, you know, step out of the way to solve the solution. Whereas, do they, you know, do they you would, think, sorry, to back it up, do they complain to the right people or just amongst themselves? Amongst themselves. Okay. So we like to complain amongst ourselves. Man, that I is, think if it was, um, a, you know, a lot of people don't vote, but if you could vote on Instagram or something, people would definitely vote. They don't want to make it easy. They don't for make you. it easy. They no. don't want to make it easy for you to. To have your say. No, they don't make it easy for the minority groups, whoever they is. Do you know how they do it in Australia? You can only skip out on voting three times in a row or else you get fined. I'll tell you that. If you did that finding thing for Asians, they not trying to lose that hundred. Some other people share the sentiment, but sometimes I look at how uninvolved Asians are in like the government and like, you know, infrastructure. And I'm just like, how can you even complain if you're not going to get involved? That's rough. I'm not saying you can't complain, but I'm like, did you even try? That's just, I'm not saying No, that's wrong. fair. That's I'm fair. just posing that question. That's fair. And if you could vote through uh, trolley Reddit comments, Asians would be... Dude, if you could vote through Reddit, Which wise, Andrew dude. Yang's going to win then. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang 2020. All right, guys, moving on. We got point number six. Are half Asians considered Asian? Can they be considered Asian? And what does it take for them to be considered Asian? Anybody can claim anything they want. But there's, and actually anybody can tell them that they're not that that's just the way the game goes uh, well you know we always had this joke where it was like you know if you are half asian but you don't care about your asian side then you just half but if you half asian and you care about it then you a hopper my only question to them is where's your heart do, 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 do. guys another issue in the asian american community is not really talking about mental health and helping provide that within the community. Now, this is a conversation that a lot of people um, do not talk about is like mental health within Asian community because that's kind of taboo. Like we don't want to talk about being depressed. We don't want to talk about like, oh, like our feelings. I think that kind of draws into it. Now, it's hard to help Asians if we don't think it's an issue and if we don't want to talk about it. In the Asian culture, it's almost like you're you're, you're driving a, a car on a winding mountain with just one path. And if you go off the path, you're gonna fall off the cliff and explode, right? But in the West, it's almost like in Texas where there's no mountains and you just switch in lanes. So somebody can go crazy and come back and then go left. You can kinda go off road. Yeah, you can kinda go off road and then come back on the road. Asians think that mental health is like Rainbow Road on uh, Mario Kart. Oh, when you fall off and then you just- Yeah, you gotta stay on the road or you oh, fall my. off. There's not like one of the other maps where you like, you got the bumpers and everything. Yeah. I, I would get therapy. I haven't. You're thinking about it. I'm right. thinking about it. Hey, I there's totally nothing. See, there's nothing wrong with therapy, guys. I mean, you go to a doctor, right? You go to a physical therapist. You go to a Cairo. You go to a dentist when you need help exactly. with your teeth, right? You go to a physical therapist. How come you don't go to a mental therapist? Man, I'm, Man hey. yo, let me tell you guys this. Oh, shit. Yeah. Should the word Asian include South Asians and Indians? Why don't we? Why don't we? Yeah. Well, I some people don't. I'm I think not saying in the I government, don't. I do think so. in the government, we are. They, it is. Yeah. And I will say this. Not all... Indians and South Asians 
really desire to be part of no. it. It kind of depends on the individual of the community. If they choose to be part of the Asian community, like I know Aziz Ansari, he more considers himself like part of the Asian, larger Asian American narrative. But there's also a lot of, uh, some other prominent South Asian celebrities that don't necessarily rep being Asian. They rep being brown and Indian, and that's okay too. But it's kind of like, then can the Asians look up to them? Should the Asian group like, applaud them and reward them even though they don't really acknowledge that they're like asian you know because that kind of gives the connotation that they're east asian i don't know east or southeast asian who knows no solutions guys like i said just an issue no solutions we just talking about the issues number nine are people just catering to asians now for economic reasons because the asian population is growing and has more purchasing power and you know all the wealthy immigrants are moving in or do they really accept us and do they care about our culture? I mean, a long story short is that um, they like the money, Play but it game. could lead to it could lead to respect, and sometimes, unfortunately, or fortunately, in a capitalist society, a lot of times money and respect go hand in hand. So, should Asians care about them fully respecting, or should they just be happy and be like, "Hey, they just they're consuming our culture; it's all good," and they're catering to me? I don't care if they respect it. Should we be happy about this, or should we be looking at it with a critical eye, being like, "Man, I don't know if they really respecting if it's true love or not, if it's truly embracement of our culture or not." They, I think they should. I think they should. They should care. They should care. Number ten: Are Asian Americans too comfortable to keep fighting? and keep trying, and keep applying, and keep driving? Are they getting too comfortable here? Yeah, I mean, honestly, did, this they, is a did, question. did they ever have it? How can you lose something you don't have? Dang, that's another question. <laughs> I mean, that's for you guys out how, there. That's another how question. How can you lose fangs that you don't have? Question. <laughs> I don't know. That's like saying I lost my ability to dunk. Let me, hey, surprise. I ain't never been able to dunk. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> surprise! Except the surprise. Hoop, when the hoop's lowered. That's assuming uh, a 10-foot hoop. Yeah. All right, guys, that's the last word. I don't think we need to say anything more. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was real. That's, that's, he was man, Confucius just told you. You everything. took us up. My whole vision went blurry. Of that. Guys, basically, I think a lot of the issues that we talked about in this video today, all 10 of them, um, could be related to just Eastern people being in the West. We have people from the East, East but we're living in the West. There is a misalignment with a lot of people's philosophies. I'm not saying it's wrong. Misalignment does not mean wrong alignment. It just means that it's a misalignment depending on what you're trying to do. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. In the comments below, let us know what you guys think about these issues. I'm cool with the comment section being this whole huge message board. I'm sure it's going to get crazy, but we just wanted to share that. We want to talk more about this stuff. There's more exclusive podcast material on the memberships channel. This one was particularly strong. We wanted to give it to you guys on the main channel. That's Nelson Chan for Hoopa Life. David and Andrew from the Fung Bros. Thank you for watching that. And comment away. Until next time, we out. Peace. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for watching that video. And thank you for watching a lot of other videos. And thank you for subscribing. Because, David, we have just reached 2 million subscribers. 2 Woo! million! Woo! Woo! And we have to give a huge gigantic shout out to our biggest sponsor of all time for whom without them this none of this would be possible i gotta give a shout out to our sponsor you guys no seriously you guys have been the sponsor of our entire channel i mean you know we have other sponsors but you guys have been watching the videos and subscribing and it's not all about subscriptions obviously it's about engagement it's about the people you touch it's about the comments the ups and downs and everything i mean you guys just meeting you guys in person and connecting with you guys that's what it's really about i think it's so rare for